We're going to briefly introduce the basics of feedback control, talking about three topics, signals and systems, block diagrams, and the closed loop transfer function. Here's a block diagram of a typical feedback control system, and we're going to use it to explain how feedback can improve the performance and stability of a system. Let's introduce the different parts. First of all, we have signals and systems, one of the signals being the output of the system, and uh, the, that's being produced by the plant, which is a generic term for the system that's being controlled. Plant actually has a historical uh, meaning com coming from the days when feedback control was uh, referring to control of an actual factory or plant that was producing some product. But nowadays, the term plant is being used generically to refer to any kind of system that you're trying to control. So we'll usually use uh, the letter P of S uh, to refer to the plant, uh, but it's just any transfer function for uh, the differential equation for uh, what you're trying to control. Another signal of interest is the reference, and usually when we apply a reference to a feedback control system, this is what we desire uh, the value of the output to be. So we desire to influence the output by applying a reference signal. An example would be in a uh, autopilot for an airplane, the desired altitude might be the reference and then the output is uh, controlled in order to uh, try to meet that reference. Another signal of interest is what we call the error signal where we uh, measure the output and we compare that with the input R of uh, the reference R of T and that produces an error signal E of T and we want this to uh, be close to zero. The way we measure our uh, y of t is with a sensor, which may have dynamics of its own, and uh, that's going to give us something to compare against the reference. And quite often for us, the, uh, the sensor is just going to have a, a uh, transfer function of 1. In uh, some systems, the sensor is uh, going to uh, produce a unit conversion, but either way, the idea is that whatever you're comparing against r uh, is going to give you an error signal. What do we do with the error signal? We then feed that into a control system, C of S. This is the controller. It's something that we get to design in order to cause uh, the behavior of this overall system to uh, do what we want it to do. The way to read one of these block diagrams is we have signals and systems. Signals are generally going to be uh, entering into a system through an arrow and exiting through an arrow and then the transfer function itself is going to be put into a box. And the way to read this is that y of s, the output, is going to be equal to h of s times u of s, where u is the input. And the key, of course, is to follow the arrows. So if we had the following system, we could also have arrows drawn like this and, uh, say, have x going in here and z coming out. This would still be read z of s is equal to p of s times x of s. So the input signal is multiplied by the transfer function to produce the output. And then the arrows tell us the direction of input and output. So we've explained how arrows can be used to, uh, to feed signals into systems. Next, let's talk about how to handle the uh, a sequence of block diagrams. So we know that x of s is equal to h of s times u of s. And then g of s is going to produce an output y of s is equal to g of s times x of s. But since we already know what that's equal to, we can say g times h times u. Notice also that uh, these transfer functions, when they're multiplied by each other, uh, multiplication is commutative. And so we can rearrange the order of these if we needed to. But the main idea is that if you feed in a signal, through multiple blocks, you just multiply the transfer functions together in order to get the uh, total behavior. A term that we use uh, when uh, the transfer function is just a constant is we just call that a gain, meaning that we multiply whatever the input is by some number and make it bigger or smaller. Another feature in many block diagrams is what we call a summing junction. And the way this should be read is that the output is just going to be equal to the sum of all the inputs where there may be a, a sign that tells us how to use that particular input. So in this particular case, y of t is going to be equal to u of t minus d of t 
sorry, plus d of t minus x of t, where the minus sign comes from here. Let's apply that to the diagram for this system, where we know that this output is going to be h of s multiplied by the Laplace transform of the input. So u of t, the Laplace transform is u of s, so we know that the output here is just h times u. Similarly, we'll add that uh, in here, so then we know that the, the, the signal here is h times u plus d of s, where again we're just taking the Laplace transform of that signal. So the output y of s is going to be equal to g of s times everything that we fed in, which is h times u plus d of s. Let's return to our original system with feedback and define what we call the closed loop transfer function. And what that refers to is the entire system starting with the reference as the input and producing the output y. In other words, it's y of s over r of s. That's the closed loop transfer function. Also, remember that we said that sensors often have a gain of 1 or they just perform a unit conversion. And so that allows us to find another term. Very common is we use unity gain negative feedback. Feedback means the signal coming back towards the input. Unity gain means that uh, our sensor is only going to multiply that output by 1. And then we're going to compare that with a reference to produce our error signal. This is our most common form of feedback that we're going to that we're going to use, unity gain negative feedback. Let's summarize what we've talked about so far. We defined some signals and systems, the signals being the reference, error, command, and output, the systems being the plant, the system that we want to control, the controller, the thing that we get to design to improve the performance, and a sensor, which we said is often just going to have a gain of one. We also explained how to deal with transfer functions in blocks as well as what to do with summing junctions in order to produce an output. Finally, we define what we call the closed loop transfer function, where we have a reference, we have a negative feedback coming back from the output of our system, and we may have a controller and some other pieces in the middle. And the, when we feed the output back, we often have unity gain. So that's where that term unity gain negative feedback comes from.